In your 30s, it can be very difficult to prioritize your health and fitness. So I'm gonna share some strategies that help you to manage your time effectively and make time to exercise and get those healthy meals that you need to. Even if you work long hours, have a hectic social life and family commitments. And so here's a simple step-by-step -step guide. So the first thing that we need to do is reframe how we perceive what that time spent being active is. Now, to most people who are out of shape, they see it as a cost. They see it as a cost of their time. It's an extra thing to fit into their day. And once they do it, it's going to have no real impact on their lives. Whereas those people who are healthy, strong, energized, and always in shape view that time as the exact opposite. It's an investment in themselves. It's an investment in them being more energized, more productive, and being healthy for the long term. So if you're currently in that camp where you think that this is a cost of your time, it's really important that you see this as an investment in your time. The next step, once you've reframed your mindset, is to try and find those pockets of time where you can actually fit in time to exercise. There's no point wandering aimlessly into the week, hoping that you're going to eat the foods that you need to eat and hoping that you're going to fit in exercise at the end of a very long work day. It's time to plan. So we want to choose Sunday because we usually have a bit of time on that day and you can spend no more than 30 minutes just planning out what your next week is going to look like to set you up for success. So let's assume you're getting stuck into this process. 4 p.m. on a Sunday, you're going to open up your calendar and you're going to have a look through. Now, you may already have appointments in there, but I want you to make sure that you put in all of those important appointments so this isn't your workouts yet, just all those important commitments that have to be done. Then you can have a look and just see what the lay of the land is in terms of where you can fit time into exercise. The other thing that you can do at this point as well is take a look and see where you're going to be having meetings, dinners, lunches. See if you can actually have any influence on those so that you can make the best decisions. Or if not, you might need to make some kind of contingency plan because if you're going out for dinner that night and you know it's easily going to be 1200 calories, you can plan your rest of the day to account for that. Now, once you've blocked out all those really important commitments, the ones that you can't miss, the ones you definitely have to go to, it's now time to find those times to exercise. If I was you, I would choose a time when you feel that you have the most energy and that's going to ensure that you're not going to be putting this off at times when you feel mentally drained. So basically what I'm driving at here is try and make sure that you can exercise first thing because too much mental stress piles on during the day and sometimes you have no influence on your time at the end of the day. And this is actually a strategy that I employed when I was doing an internship at JP Morgan. I knew that the only time that I had to control was the start of my day. As soon as I was in the office, I had no idea when I could get to the gym. So I set my day up to ensure that I could get to the gym first thing, get a 30 minute session done and then get to work for 7am, which was the right thing to do because sometimes I was at work until 11pm. So if you find yourself in a similar situation, I'd really urge you to try and make time to exercise first thing in the morning. On top of that, in order to be efficient with your time, I've actually devised two time-saving strength training protocols. One is the J1E protocol, and that is essentially choosing a lower body compound movement, squats, deadlifts, lunges, and just doing that exercise. So that means we're not doing this just to get super sweaty. We're just doing two to three really hard sets, and then we're just getting out of there. That's a great way to just start to build that habit of strength training if you're not doing it any other moment. And creating that habit is good conditions for long-term endurance, which means that you're gonna be able to stick to that for the long-term and be healthy for the long term. And the other protocol I devise is a one-two lift whereby you do a main lift and then a superset. So that's a great way to fit in more exercises and more volume if you need to. Now I just want to say at this point, this strategy is for you to just get used to prioritizing some form of strength training and to achieve some kind of benefits over the long term. And these can form the basis of your long-term minimums, i.e. the exercise that you know that you can do week in, week out, regardless of what's going on. But obviously if you want some more substantial, profound results, you're probably going to have to dedicate more volume but this is a fantastic start to help to build that habit. If you've already set your home up for success, you should have an idea of the type of meals that you can prepare with the food that you have in your house. Or if you're really short on time, there is nothing better than doing meal delivery. I do meal deliveries, it's a time saver and I know exactly what I'm eating with those foods, which outsources physical and mental energy and saves me a lot of time. So I recommend that you do that. But regardless of however you choose to get your nutrients in over the course of the week, it's important that you have clarity on that. So what I would do is I would open up my fitness pal and I'd urge you to pre-track a few meals for the next 
next few days just to know that you are on target towards you achieving your goals. And that's really going to help also in those scenarios where you've got those dinners out. Because if you can somehow pre-track that, you know you can pre-track your meals at the start of the day to ensure that you're still going to be on track by the end of the day when you have that meal out. And then once you've got all of that in place, the next thing that I would do is just do your online shopping. So if you've already decided what you're going to be eating next week and you don't have the ingredients in, get them in and make sure they're in the house. Otherwise, you're going to be prone to making poor decisions through the week just because you've not prepared and you've not got the right foods in your house to set you up for success. And as mentioned in the last point, this is a great opportunity as well to set up some kind of meal delivery service, which is a super easy way to ensure that you'll stay on track over the course of the week. Now these are really simple steps and you can do that in 15 to 30 minutes and if you do that you are setting up your week for success. So make sure that you follow these steps to create a system that works for you, block out time to exercise, pre-track your meals and do your online shopping. If you do all of that on a Sunday you're going to find Monday through to next Sunday it's going to be so easy for you to stay on track with your goals and make the best decisions for you to get strong, get healthy, get lean and energized. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.